Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, I'm going to talk all about the direct and indirect effect of aerosols. The Obviously, with the economic shutdowns around the world, um, there's a lot fewer aerosol particles going up into the atmosphere. So people anecdotally, you know, look, are looking up at the sky and saying, hey, the sky is a lot bluer. You know, we don't hear the airplanes flying overhead since air traffic is down 90% in most places. So all of these things are clearly affecting climate. They're reducing the effect known as global dimming. And I've talked about this in a few previous videos, but I'm going to talk about some very technical things in this video and the next one um, about how these so-called anthropogenic aerosols are affecting uh, climate. So anthropogenic aerosols, mostly we think of them as particulate matter, air pollution, if you like. Um, they can be liquid, um, basically, as well, but non-H2O. Uh, Okay, not water, it can be sulfates and uh, things like that. Um, just have to straighten my camera a little bit here. It was knocked by my little kitty there. Okay, so the first direct effect of these aerosols is that they block some of the sunlight. Okay, they're up in the atmosphere. They actually absorb some of the solar rays, the shortwave solar radiation from the sun and there's therefore less of this uh, sunlight reaches the Earth's surface, so it cools the surface. It, this is a direct effect, and it's considered that uh, there's somewhere in the range from 0 0.25 degrees Celsius to 1.1 degrees Celsius uh, effect of cooling on the planet to um, basically reduce the warming that we see from greenhouse gases. But there's indirect effects as well. These, um, the, the, these particles, they create small, um, they're, they're necessary in cloud generation. Part, we call them cloud condensation nuclei. So small particles in the air uh, as you get water vapor convecting upwards and rising and cooling, it condenses onto these droplets, forming onto these particles, forming very, very tiny water droplets. If there's more cloud condensation nuclei from, from pollution, from particulates that we put up there, the anthropogenic aerosols, then these clouds will get far more um, smaller water droplets as opposed to you know having larger water droplets forming in the clouds if there's a lack of this pollution. And when there's a lot of these small water droplets, the cloud is a lot whiter, it's a lot more reflective. So it reflects incoming sunlight, less of this sunlight hits the surface of the earth, so it cools the surface of the earth. This is known as the Tuomi effect. This is, if, if you like, the first indirect effect. Another, there's another factor. Smaller cloud droplets in clouds suppresses drizzle, and it also, so because there's less precipitation from the cloud, the water vapor can build up into the cloud, and this increases the cloud height. So the, the, the cloud can grow in thickness, and it has a higher water content, higher volume. So the cloud has an increased uh, lifetime. It lasts for a longer period of time. Um, so this is another indirect effect, if you like, the second indirect effect, and it's called the Albrecht effect. Okay, so first thing is the direct effect with the aerosol particles blocking some sunlight themselves. Second thing is they create um, more droplets in clouds, so they bright brighter clouds which reflect sunlight and, and cause cooling on the surface. That's the Tuomi effect. And the third thing is that the cloud, the dr drizzle or rain is suppressed, the cloud height increases, there's an increased cloud lifetime. This is the Albrecht effect, also causes cooling. Um, so there is another effect, which is the heating effect. Okay, Heating uh, causes the cloud to
to burn off. So without precipitation, you know, clouds, not all clouds are rain bearing, bearing. So the clouds actually burn off, you know, when it's warmer. Um, so when there's more aerosols in the air and it's cooler, the clouds uh, will not burn off as much. So cause uh, lots of cooling, but without the aerosols, the clouds that are created can um, not produce the rain and they can burn off more quickly because it's hotter. So they don't uh, last as long when there's less aerosols. Okay, so this is another indirect effect, the heating effect. So the net result is that less aerosols, you know, you have a warmer planet. And that number, like I said, is probably in the range from the overall effect is pr maybe 0 0.25 to 1.1 degrees Celsius. Um, and just um, basically, but there's, it's not just that you're hotter during the day, okay? During the day, the sky is a lot clearer. It looks a lot bluer. There's less clouds, less, uh, you know, and we're talking about mostly low level clouds, but there's also less contrails or higher level clouds. So more heat from the sun, more sunlight can get down to the surface of the earth clearly, and we have higher temperatures during the day, so hotter during the day. But at night, the, something different happens. The heat can radiate out from the surface up through into space. It's not trapped. It's not kept in the Earth's system by any clouds. So that means the daily lows, you know, at night get lower. So the days when the sun is shining are hotter and the nights are cooler. Okay, so definitely the temperature um, variation, the, the diurnal temperature range, daily temperature range, if you take the max temperature max in the day minus temperature min, that number is actually higher now with a lot less aerosols. Um, a study on 9-11 when the planes weren't flying for a few days showed that that effect was an increase of daily temperature range by 1.1 degrees Celsius and there haven't been any studies on uh, that I've that have come out yet to show what this temperature variation is now but you know we can be certain that you know we can be assured that it's that it is happening um, so the daily temperature variations definitely um, increased you know what about the temperatures during the day that would have increased and temperatures at night would have decreased so if you look at the average temperatures you know, we think that they would increase with the reduction of global dimming, but those numbers need to be determined. I've done a few videos on that uh, previously. Okay, so, and of course this global dimming will offset some of the warming induced by emissions of greenhouse gases. So this is an enhancement of low level clouds. Um, okay, is, is from the aerosol particles. So they'll reflect more solar radiation back to space during the day. They block more long wave radiation going back to space at night, the low level clouds. So they make it cooler in the day and it does not get as cold at night. But of course, you know, if you get rid of these aerosols, they're greatly reduce them as we have seen with the shutdowns from the coronavirus, we get warmer days and cold nights. Okay, so let's talk about cloud formation. Water vapor um, rises, you know, th there's evaporation at the surface of the ocean. Um, for example, water vapor rises, it must condense on pre-existing small particles. If there's more tiny particles, more cloud condensation nuclei, then there's more cloud droplets and they're smaller. Um, they don't have time to coalesce and, and to grow as much, so there's less rainfall. Also, larger numbers of small cloud droplets, you know, the rain gets suppressed, water stays in the cloud for a longer period of time. So cloud cover increases, the liquid water content, the LWC, uh, increases, the clouds are thicker, so they go to a larger height, okay? And the effect is strongest over the oceans because there's a huge source of water for evaporation. 
So one of the ideas for cooling the planet is to use marine cloud brightening, MCB, because there's abundant moisture for sustaining low-level clouds over vast areas of the oceans. Um, so I'll talk about a study that looked at um, latitudes from the equator to 40 degrees south. Okay, um, now aerosols and clouds are an area of uncertainty in climate model simulations because it's hard to measure the cloud active aerosols by satellite and it's hard, hard to isolate the effects on clouds because you really need the cloud droplet concentrations. You need to know the vertical winds, how quickly the air is rising, convecting upwards, where the water content, the water vapor uh, condenses to form the cloud droplets. So those vertical, that vertical wind speed is needed. And there has been some breakthroughs recently in measuring cloud droplet numbers and um, vertical wind speeds from satellites over vast areas of the ocean, uh, for example, where, where, we, where, where, where there's so many of these low-level clouds. So this study, like I said, looked at the equator to 40 degrees south, and it found that 95% of the variability uh, could be explained um, for the cloud radiation effects uh, from, um, from these, these models. So the cooling effect was larger than expected because uh, mostly due to uh, precipitation suppression. So less uh, precipitation from the clouds, so the clouds would hold more liquid water content. They'd persist for longer periods of time. There was a larger cloud fraction coverage of the sky. The clouds were deeper and thicker. Okay, um, you know, we thought that what would happen with uh, more aerosols, more cloud condensation nuclei, that the clouds, the, prop, the particles would be smaller, so the cloud vertical height would develop, and eventually the, part, the cloud droplet size increases as you go up through the cloud. So we thought that the clouds would just become more vertical, and they would still precipitate as much as uh, you know, clouds with less aerosol conditions, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So you know, the aerosols explain three quarters of the variability in the cooling effects of low level marine clouds for a given thickness. So for example, if you double the number of cloud droplets, uh, ND, N sub D, then you get twice as much cooling. So there's high sensitivity. So I'll show you the actual paper and images and plots from the paper in, in uh, you know, a subsequent video. Um, but the, the, the marine stratocumulus clouds, MSCs, they're responsible for reflecting uh, much of the solar radiation received by Earth back to space because they, they're widespread, covering you know, thousands and thousands of miles um, you know, over the oceans, uh, you know, and a lot, you know, uh, in the southern, mostly in the southern hemisphere where there's less land, it's, it's more ocean. So some of the, the albedo of the clouds depends on C sub F, which is the cloud fraction. So if the sky is completely soft in, the cloud fraction would be 100% or one. You know, if there's very few clouds, or if there's covering half the sky, it would be 0 0.5, for example, or 50%. ND is the droplet concentration of the water droplets in the clouds, it's the drops per cubic centimeter, drops per unit volume. LWP is a liquid water path, the path that water takes within the cloud. CCN are cloud droplets, cloud condensation nu nuclei, which are required in the air for water vapor to condense. So the ND, the drop number of droplets, depends on the cloud condensation nuclei, how many there are and also the uh, vapor saturation, supersaturation S. Um, and this is driven by the cloud base updraft velocity, WB, okay, the vertical uh, up velocity. And it depends on the thermodynamics of the convection and also on the wind profiles. Okay, so um, so I'm going to continue in another video and talk about more of these specifics. Thank you for listening.